the dark day in Louisville, uncovering the tragic story behind the old National Bank mass shooting. Once again, we are confronted with another senseless act of violence that has left us all reeling with shock and sorrow. It seems like every time we turn on the news or open our social media feeds, we are met with yet another heartbreaking incident that has shattered the lives of countless individuals. Today's episode is no exception. We will be delving into the devastating mass shooting that occurred in a bank in Louisville, Kentucky. This heinous act of violence claimed the lives of five innocent individuals and left eight others injured, many of whom will carry the physical and emotional scars of this tragedy for the rest of their lives. As we investigate this heartbreaking incident, we are left with so many questions. What motivates individuals to commit such heinous acts of violence? Is it a result of mental illness, societal pressures, or something else entirely? And when will we as a society finally acknowledge the need for stricter gun control laws to prevent these tragedies from happening again and again? The pain and suffering caused by this tragedy cannot be measured and our hearts go out to all those affected by this senseless act of violence. Welcome to AF Crime, the channel that brings you fascinating crimes all around the world. If you're interested in this kind of content, then this channel is for you. Make sure to like this video, click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to keep you updated on our recent uploads. Join us as we explore the details of this tragic event and together, let us work towards a future where such atrocities are no longer a part of our reality. Yet again, tragedy has struck our society, leaving behind a trail of devastation and heartbreak. It was a seemingly ordinary day in downtown Louisville, Kentucky, when the peace was shattered by the sound of gunfire. A 26-year-old bank employee, Connor Sturgeon, had opened fire at his workplace, leaving five innocent individuals dead and eight others injured. As the details of the attack emerged, it became clear that this was not a random act of violence. Sturgeon had even live-streamed the attack, further highlighting the disturbing trend of individuals using technology to amplify their acts of terror. It's a tragedy that leaves us questioning the state of our society and what has driven someone to commit such a heinous act. As the authorities responded to the attack, Sturgeon engaged in a shootout with them, resulting in his death. The police later identified four of the victims, Joshua Barrett, Juliana Farmer, Tommy Elliott, and James Tut. These individuals were just going about their daily lives when their lives were cut short by an act of senseless violence. The grief and sorrow felt by the families and loved ones of the victims cannot be put into words. But just when we thought that the tragedy couldn't get any worse, news emerged that a fifth victim, 57-year-old Dina Eckert, had also succumbed to her injuries. It's a tragedy that has left behind a community reeling with pain and sorrow. The shooting began just after 8.30 a.m. on a Monday morning at the Old National Bank on East Main Street in downtown Louisville, Kentucky. According to bank manager Rebecca Buck Height Sims, employees had gathered for a morning meeting, some in person and others virtually. Little did they know that this meeting would be the last time some of them would ever see each other. As Buck Height Sims watched in horror from her computer screen, her co workers were mercilessly gunned down by a 25 year old employee named Connor Sturgeon. The police were quick to respond, arriving at the scene within three minutes of being dispatched. But the situation was already chaotic and intense. Officers engaged in a shootout with Sturgeon, who was still firing his weapon before finally killing him. The aftermath of the shooting was devastating, with shattered glass strewn at the entrance of the old National Bank and a large police presence blocking off much of the downtown street. Despite the tragedy, Mayor Craig Greenberg praised the brave actions of the first responders, whose actions undoubtedly saved lives. The shooting at the Old National Bank leaves us questioning once again how much senseless violence can continue to happen in our society. It is a tragedy that will be remembered for years to come. The live-streamed video on Instagram has since been taken down, but not before it was witnessed by horrified viewers. The video is now in the possession of the police, providing crucial evidence for the investigation. The shooter, named Connor Sturgeon, had interned at the bank for three consecutive summers, between 2018 and 2020, before joining full-time in June 2021. He graduated from the University of Alabama in December 2020 with a bachelor's and master's degree in finance, an achievement that should have set him on a path to a bright future. 
But instead of a promising future, Sturgeon's life took a dark turn. His mother called 911 after hearing secondhand that her son had a gun and was heading towards the bank. She expressed her shock and confusion, telling the operator that her son apparently left a note and that she didn't even know where he would have gotten a gun, and they didn't own any. The victims were not only the ones affected by the tragedy. Sturgeon's family laid out his mental health challenges, but insisted they never saw any warning signs of such an attack. The family is cooperating with the investigation, but still has many unanswered questions. No words can express our sorrow, anguish, and horror at the unthinkable harm our son Connor inflicted on innocent people, their families, and the entire Louisville community, the family said in a statement. As the community struggled to make sense of what happened, they turned to their faith for solace. At Holy Trinity Catholic Church, the faithful gathered to mourn one of the victims, Joshua Barrett, who was an active member of the parish. His family sat in the front pews, grief etched on their faces as fellow congregants embraced them and wept. Joshua was a senior vice president at the bank, a big guy with a bubbly personality who made himself known in the community. He was a loving husband and father to two young children who attended the parish's grade school. Joshua was a coach for first and second graders, a charismatic and charming man who patiently wrangled the little kids. His loss was felt deeply by all who knew him. Families are left grieving, grappling with the unimaginable pain of losing a loved one. Friends and communities are left to mourn and remember the memories and moments they shared with those who are no longer with us. These victims were not just statistics or names on a news report. They were living, breathing human beings with hopes and dreams, fears and aspirations. They had families who loved them, friends who cherished them, and communities that relied on them. The shooting was just the latest in a long line of mass gun violence a uniquely American phenomenon that has left countless families shattered and communities in mourning. According to the data from the Gun Violence Archive, there have been at least 145 mass shootings in the U.S. this year alone, defined as one in which at least four people are shot, excluding the shooter. The gun used in the shooting was an AR-15 style rifle, a semi-automatic rifle that has become the weapon of choice for many mass shooters. It is the most popular sporting rifle in the U.S with millions of people owning an AR-15 or similar style rifle, according to the 2021 National Firearms Survey. The AR-15 has been used in some of the most heinous mass shootings in recent history, including the Sandy Hook school shooting in Connecticut, the Aurora Theater shooting in Colorado, and the San Bernardino Holiday Party shooting in California. Just two weeks before the Louisville shooting, a shooter used an AR-15 style weapon and two other guns in a mass shooting at a private Christian elementary school in Nashville, killing three adults and three nine-year-olds. The toll of this kind of violence is immeasurable, and the pain felt by the victims' families and the community as a whole is undeniable. As we try to come to grips with the aftermath of yet another tragedy, we must remember the lives lost and work towards a future where senseless acts of violence like this are a thing of the past. As we continue to bear witness to the devastating effects of mass shootings and senseless acts of violence, it's important to recognize that these tragedies are often driven by a sense of depression and loneliness. But while we can empathize with those who are struggling with mental health issues, it's crucial to remember that this is never a justification for taking the lives of others. As we search for answers in the wake of these tragedies, we are often left with more questions than we began with. How can we prevent these kinds of crimes? What can we do to ensure that our communities are safe and secure? These are questions that we must continue to ask ourselves, even as we grapple with the grief and heartache that these events leave in their wake. One thing is certain, Violence is never the answer. No matter how hopeless or alone we may feel, taking the lives of innocent people is never a solution to our problems. Instead, we must work together to find ways to support those who are struggling with mental health issues and to create communities that are safe and welcoming for everyone. As we close out today's video, we want to encourage you to share your thoughts and comments about these issues. How can we prevent these kinds of tragedies from happening again and again? What steps can we take to ensure that our communities are safe and secure? And if you agree that we need stricter gun laws to prevent these kinds of crimes, be sure to like this video and subscribe for more news and updates about the latest true crime cases.
AF Crime, we strive to bring you more such cases. So if you are interested, do subscribe to our channel where we bring you multiple videos per week. And don't forget to click on the bell icon to receive notification whenever we publish a new video. Till the next case, and thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.